Hello, I am Dr. Julie Freischlag, and this is the Society for Vascular Surgery Briefing about Thoracic Outlet Syndrome. Thoracic Outlet Syndrome encompasses three separate conditions related to extrinsic compression of the neurovascular structures that pass through the thoracic outlet, which is the anatomic space posterior to the clavicle and overlying of the first rib. Neurogenic Thoracic Outlet Syndrome comprises 95% of diagnosed cases. Venous thoracic outlet syndrome, comprising 3% of cases, occurs when the subclavian vein is compressed by the subclavius tendon and anterior scalene muscle, resulting in thrombosis. Venous thoracic outlet syndrome is also called paget schroeder syndrome. Arterial thoracic outlet is most rare, 1% of cases, and is caused by arterial compression, leading to thrombosis, aneurysm formation, and or embolization. Oftentimes, it is associated with the presence of a cervical rib. The diagnosis of neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome is difficult to make. It is based on the history of repetitive motion activity or work or a traumatic accident and confirmed by a physical examination that reveals a tender anterior scalene muscle, ulnar weakness, and a positive elevated arm stress test. A positive absence maneuver, which is loss of a radial pulse with abduction of the arm, or a brewery in the subclavian artery with abduction, confirms the diagnosis. EMG and nerve conduction velocities are usually normal. The presenting symptoms of neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome are pain, numbness, and weakness in the affected extremity. The symptoms are usually associated with patients who have repetitive motion activity or work, such as a mechanic, hairdresser, or prolonged computer activity. Additionally, some patients suffer an injury, such as whiplash in a car accident, that results in spasm of the anterior scalene muscle, causing neurogenic thoracic outlet symptoms. The mainstay of therapy for neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome is physical therapy. Physical therapy improves symptoms in 60% of patients. Those patients who do not improve with physical therapy can undergo a first rib resection and anterior scalenectomy to relieve the compression of the brachial plexus and spasm of the anterior scalene muscle. A scalene block with lidocaine can provide temporary relief about four hours and can predict the successful outcome of the operation. Botox injections in the scalene muscle can provide relief for up to three months and help the patient progress with physical therapy. It is most helpful in those patients with a history of a traumatic accident. The operation can be performed through a supraclavicular or transaxillary incision. Physical therapy must follow surgery in order to increase the range of motion, improve strength, and prevent scar tissue formation. Venous thoracic outlet syndrome presents with acute swelling of the affected extremity, resulting from the thrombosis of the main vein draining the arm. The acute treatment should be thrombolysis to dissolve the clot, followed by anticoagulation and then first rib resection and scalenectomy. The first rib can be removed immediately as well. A venogram and angioplasty should be performed two weeks following the operation to dilate the vein. This cannot be done until the rib and muscles are removed, eliminating the extrinsic compression. These patients tend to be very active, such as athletes or musicians, and can return to their sport or craft after the vein is restored to patency. Some patients present with intermittent compression of the vein with intermittent swelling and can undergo a first rib resection prior to thrombosis. Arterial thoracic outlet syndrome needs to be addressed surgically by removal of the first rib, anterior scalene muscle, and the cervical rib if present. If an aneurysm is present, it should be resected and replaced with a saphenous vein or prosthetic graft. If the patient presents with an arterial occlusion, thrombolytic treatment can acutely open up the artery, and then the first rib and or cervical rib can be resected. If a cervical rib is present on the contralateral side, prophylactic resection is recommended. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.